The good old days of gaming with the boys are but a memory. Nowadays, every game is just a slog of skill and competition. We're all grinding for the top, and everything that made us love gaming is behind us. No, I mean it's literally behind us, isn't it? Lethal Gosh Darn Company. It's taking the world by storm. Every day I see new TikTok clips that are better than the last. And to top it all off, it's even outselling Call of Duty. That's right, this little indie game that's got no marketing budget is outselling the game series that even your grandma has heard of. And it isn't going up against the COD of last year, it's going up against the COD that just came out a month ago. That's insane. So how are they doing it? There's gotta be a conspiracy that runs deep. It's some industry plant game that's being funded by some secret underground developers. They have an agenda. They're trying to undermine the insanely cool and ethical monopoly that COD has on the market and what... What's that? I'm getting some breaking news that it's just a really good game. It's... it's good. However, being a good game isn't enough to steal away the spotlight like few games ever have. Good games are often successful on their own merits, but few have the potential to top the charts for months on end. So what's the secret sauce? Lethal Company's secret sauce is made up of three parts. So let's get to the first one. The gaming market these days is extremely competitive. Like every single form of modern media, games have to give you constant hits of dopamine. But they don't want to overwhelm you with complexity and guides on guides on guides. Most games do need to communicate information to the player immediately. And that makes sense. But for this game, let me tell you, there is nothing like being clueless. Ah. Wow. Oh! What does the laser pointer do? Oh! Run, 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 run! Ah! Ah! Wait, 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 wait. There we go. My god, he's discoing. Okay, guys, there's something big by the ship apparently, so we may want to be quiet when we're going back. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna close go, the door. Go, go, go. Oh! I'm leading it out. No! Hello? Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Should we come in right here? Yeah, this way. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. I'm dead. Uh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no. This game knows that it's fun to figure out what the heck's even going on. One second, you hear a noise like... And then the next, you see... In some games, this wouldn't be enough, but there's a reason that it works here. Everything is designed with mystery and tension in mind. Here's a little example of that. In some of my earliest games, I noticed these vents that were in hallways, but they were always closed. I figured they were just some cool aesthetic additions until I saw one that was open. Instantly, I was put on edge. I realized that something had come through this vent. I took two steps forward to investigate, and a little roach guy landed on my face. I screamed for help from my friends, help me. but it was in vain, as the roach was muffling my screams for help. Moments later, I died. In that example, a small, seemingly insignificant detail is turned into a feature that builds tension and puts you on edge. Details like this are all over the place in Lethal Company, and they all pile up like the loot at the company building. Root beer! Root beer! But let's be honest here, that wouldn't be very much fun by yourself. So this brings me to arguably the most important part of the game. When I tell you that like 60% of the reason that this game rocks is proximity chat, I mean it. That sounds like an insult, but it really isn't. The way your voice echoes in deep canyons. How muffled your friends get when they're wearing a funny hat. Get your soda, you dropped your soda. <laughs> My soda. Alright. I got it. So good at this game. 
at the instant cut off after a scream of terror. Oh Jesus, I'm dead. <laughs> it all makes this game infinitely more fun. The proximity chat reflects the world around you. It adds a level of immersion that is unmatched. It really is. So what is the secret sauce? Secret sauce is the combination of the game design and the proximity chat. Wow, so surprising. These intense spooky moments are elevated to crazy levels when you hear your friends screaming alongside you. It's obvious that this game was made to play with friends. It really takes me back to a simpler time when I used to play Halo 3 custom games, or Gary's Mod TTT. It really is one of the first games in a long time that makes it feel like it's a classic night with the boys. And that feeling is worth a million Call of Duties. I can't recommend this game enough, but there are... Okay, okay, before you start typing, I really do mean a few drawbacks. I am fully aware that this game is early access and I know that the devs have already addressed some of my concerns. In fact, while I was writing this script, they put out an update that addresses a lot of what I'm about to say, so take it with a grain of salt. Okay, cool. So my biggest concern with the game right now is replayability, and I know it isn't supposed to be a time sink kind of game, but even so, there needs to be a little bit more. For instance, there are two types of dungeons, the industrial complex and the mansion. Both are super fun to play through, but there's only two. After my first playthrough, I was at work, waiting to play the game again, daydreaming of what awaited me on the six remaining planets that I had yet to visit. I was a bit disappointed to find that I had already kind of seen everything that the game had to offer, at least on a surface level. There is a good bit of depth to the game that you will discover as you continue playing. Typically, you don't get the mansion instance until you get to some of the later planets, but there is a small chance that you can get it on any of the planets. I just so happened to get it on one of my first playthroughs. Because of this, I was a little bit let down that I had already seen the only two types of instances in the game. Obviously, I hadn't explored everything inside of those yet, I hadn't encountered every monster, but I was expecting at least one or two more dungeon types. On top of this, one of my favorite places in the game is actually the company building planet. The subtle world building and the eerie, endless walkways from either side just did something for me. I was a little bit disappointed to find that there really wasn't much else like this in the game. I was really hoping that one of the planets might be an abandoned town, or even a place with other peaceful alien creatures where you can buy things and do stuff, I don't know. I feel like we need to be working toward an end goal. I get that the core theme of the game is absolute unchecked use and abuse of a workforce that has no choice, but maybe that's part of the story and we form a union or something. I don't know, I'm, I'm not the dev on the game, but it'd just be cool to have something to work toward. I just know that after playing the game for 10 plus hours, I can already feel the repetition setting in. On the flip side, after I had written the script, they added a new update a couple of days ago, and it's pretty good. They've already added multiple new enemies, uh, some very interesting items like the tragedy and comedy masks, the transmit thing where it lets you type stupid messages like bazinga to your friends. <laughs> spray paint cans, they've tweaked a couple of the enemies. Thank goodness they tweaked the forest giant. That thing was way too hard to avoid before. So it's a really great start that after the immediate success of the game, they're already throwing out a pretty good update. But now it's time for my Overall, Lethal Company absolutely deserves its place above Call of Duty. The complete polar opposite sides of the spectrum of game design are just astounding. On one side, you've got a game franchise that has been going strong for decades. They own portions of the market, they're super powerful. But they've gotten extremely complacent, and their game design is lazy, uninspired, and it's just a cash grab most of the time. On the other side, you've got an indie game that is coming out of nowhere, and it's got no budget or anything, and you can tell that every single little detail in the game was thought out and experienced by the developers a million times over until they knew it was perfect 
for the experience that they were trying to make. There are so many times when I'm playing the game where something happens that I would have never expected the devs to plan for, and they did. And as you keep playing the game, you'll find that every monster is pretty nuanced, and there's ways to combat them that you didn't understand at first. I don't want to spoil most of the monster's weaknesses, because that's a fun part to discover yourself, but I'll give one. Early on, I would constantly encounter the eyeless dogs that wander around the planets at night if you're getting back to your ship too late. Every time I saw them, I would scream out to my friends to be on alert, or to run away. It wasn't until many hours later that I realized there's a reason they're called Called eyeless dogs. They can't even see you. So as long as you stay quiet and you don't say anything, they won't come after you. This makes them feel super threatening early on when you're facing them, and then later on when you've got more hours, you realize that they're actually one of the easier things to avoid when you're outside too late on a planet. Almost every monster in the game has some form of this, a weakness that you can find that may not let you defeat the monster, but it'll at least help you avoid it and get back with more of that juicy loot. That's not to say that they still aren't challenging. There are many times where a situation arises where you're crouching around avoiding the eyeless dogs and then something else happens that you do need to tell your friends about, so you've got a choice to make. Again, it adds another layer of depth when you learn more about the monsters because then your strategy changes completely. All in all, every aspect of this game's design comes together to form one of the funniest gaming experiences I've had in a while. Not to mention the amazing sound design, better than most AAA games. And while a lot of the Call of Duty bros may disagree with me, it's got really cool art direction. It's got amazing monster design with plenty borrowed from media like the coil heads and plenty of original ideas too. So the real answer to why is Lethal Company so good is everything. It's just, it's just that good. Go play it. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see me and some buddies messing around on Lethal Company, getting up to some goofs, some gaffs, I'll put a video on screen right here. You can check it out. All right, thank you. Goodbye.